Hello, and thanks for tuning in. We're going to consider why employees are the biggest risk for owners and for the buyers of businesses. In this episode, we're paying attention to numerous situations which are ahead for the employees and the employers. Hey, do you remember when people were complaining about the millennials? Old news. Here's what's on the front page of my newspaper today. Young people feel weary of lectures. I feel like the older generation is constantly pushing you to do stuff like they did when they were in their 20s. But it's not even comparable to when they were in their 20s. The next headline, Alphabet announces plans to lay off 12,000 workers. Okay, that's part of the endless stream of upsetting news. It's about disgruntled people, employees and employers. But there's more than the troubles. There's a sprinkling of good news. And that's what I'm sharing with you in this episode. But first, a spoiler alert. If you're trying to buy a sole proprietorship or any company, that is excessively dependent upon its owner or its new owner, you are the risk. You. I'm Ted Leverett, broadcasting from partneronqual.com. I'm the original business buyer advocate. For more than 30 years, I've been training and guiding people worldwide who buy small and mid-sized businesses. I'm not a business broker, never have been, I don't sell businesses or represent sellers. You can learn more about how the savviest searchers and buyers achieve done deals by reading both of my books. Oh, by the way, sellers read them too, so they know how buyers are going to behave. How to prepare yourself and find the right business to buy. And how to buy the right business the right way. You can get them on Amazon. Our topic today concerns what's ahead for the employees and employers of small and mid-sized businesses and for the sellers and buyers of those kinds of businesses. In this episode, one of seven on the topics we're covering in this series, I'm zeroing in on some of the hopeful news, some of which may be trending toward harmonious relationships among the employees and employers. So what's ahead? Let's consider 26 mostly hopeful topics, depending on, well, really, depending on whether you're an employee or employer. This sampling comes from news and social media. These are the headlines. Number one, the year ahead, HR resolutions for 2023. Hey, Google that headline, the insights from from HR Brew, that's one of the really terrific sources I'm enjoying, HR Brew. Okay, number two, HR leaders are focused on employee engagement and improving the hybrid work model as they enter the new year. Number three, here are all the new salary transparency laws going into effect in 2023. Well, actually, that's sort of the good and the bad news, depending on your point of view. Four, how do human resources influence M&A transactions? Um, guess what? Bigly. Number five, quiet hiring will dominate the U.S. in 2023, says HR, HR experts. So how to prepare? Number six, employee risk management. What it is and why it matters. Hmm, that's something to look up, isn't it? Number seven, Risk analysis and risk management webinars. Not a bad idea to get some training, is it? Number eight, are employees your greatest asset or your biggest risk? Nine, what's the risk of your employees opting out of change? Ten, five, internal control risks every organization should address. And of course, I work for business buyers and we're looking for those kind of risks. Eleven, 
top talent experts weigh in on 2023 hiring after the economic woes that roiled last year. 12. Five predictions for the labor market in 2023. Now, the reason I'm putting this stuff here is you can look it up. In a moment, I'll tell you how I made it easy for you. You'll get all that from me with a click. Number 13. Employers plan the largest raises since 2007, but is it enough? This is what scares me working for business buyers. It better scare you too if you're thinking of buying a business. Employers planning the largest raises since 2007, and is it going to be enough? 14. What if my company can't afford inflation raises? Hmm. 15. Eight risks you take if you fail to track employee engagement, and retention. Again, working for buyers, we zero in on that. And for you owners that say, well, I don't know, uh, well, that's a good way to have us walk away. 82% of workers want more sustainability training. If you don't know what that is, you better look it up. 17. Here's how pay transparency can help employees and employers. Yeah, that's kind of surprising. Better read that article too. 18. How HR is balancing pay transparency with the volatile job market and executive demands. This is a really touchy issue right now, and you can thank your governments for it. 19. Telecommuting, the pros, cons, and risks of working from home. 20. Employees still reluctant to return to the office study finds. 21. Return to office occupancy rates are bound to hit a ceiling. 2023 could be the year. 22. Companies to implement a hiring freeze and layoffs. Hmm. 23. Lots of layoffs and few jobless claims. 24. Accessibility in the workplace. From return to work programs to accommodations. This is a big one. Hey, you got a lot of litigating lawyers out there uh, who are taking advantage of employers on that one. 25. JP Morgan's chief, U.S. economist, warns of job losses and higher unemployment ahead. Well, to some extent, it's going to add some uh, inventory of employees for us to hire, isn't it? And 26. The best HR trends that you should be focusing on in 2023. Don't just wait for some HR person to enlighten you. Learn about this stuff. You need to pay attention to the headlines because they're telling you what's happening, what's ahead. Hey, look, here's how to access links to more than 100 free reports and other resources that you can use to anticipate what's ahead and then handle it. In other words, every one of those headlines I've saved for you in a file, I'm now showing you how to get it. Go to LinkedIn. Search for this. Why employees are the biggest risk for business, owners, sellers, and buyers. Or just go there and type my name in, Ted Leverett, and look at my articles. It's one of the more recent ones I've published. It's got all the links you need. Oh, you can also access that kind of stuff on my website, partneroncall.com. Hey, we got one more episode to go. Be sure to see it. It's called Solutions. You're going to see how the savviest employers are reacting, how they're mitigating and solving what today, well, it might appear to you to be an overwhelmingly negative environment if you're an employer. But hey, even if you're an employee, it doesn't look good. But it could. This too can help you right now. It's how I advise my clients, the business buyers. Hey, by the way, it's 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 useful for the owners and sellers to know also. Hey, and, and employees, you ought to know what we're thinking about. So go to YouTube, look for this. Here's what savvy buyers detect from employees of companies for sale. And folks, the best time to do that. Well, is now. Be sure you do it before you try to buy a company. You really probably ought to do it before you try to sell a company also. Buyers do this during due diligence. And, and key, what we're keying in are the key employees. So, hey, the video shows how to do it. It even gives you the questions to ask. Okay, then I hope you'll contact me to schedule a, a private conversation on Zoom. We'll assess your situations. We'll try to improve them. 
You can email me from my website, partneroncall.com. What's the bottom line? Now is a good time to pay attention to what's happening among employees and employers. It determines your future in business. Remember, employees fuel cash flow. Oh, I meant to say committed employees can fuel your cash flow or not. By the way, there are quite a few small and mid-sized businesses for sale because the owners do not want to live through what's ahead. So buyers, be aware and be aware. Okay, here are my seven episodes. If you've listened to the other ones, well, just bear with me for a second because I have something really good coming up. The first one, evolving employer-employee relationships. Number two, the availability and costs of employees. Three, problematic behaviors. Four, problematic expectations. Number five, what's worrying employees and employers? Six, you just listened to it, what's ahead? And seven, tune into this one, solutions for employers and employees. Okay, look, in this presentation, I've tried to bring to the surface some ideas that help It can help you know what you're up against and what to do about it, but don't let our communication end here. Let's privately Zoom so we can focus and you can get better results. Email me from my website, partneroncall.com. Plus, hey, I can help you deploy the tactics and strategies from my how-to books. You can get them on Amazon. So, I'm Ted Leverett, the original business buyer advocate. Thanks for listening, and be careful out there. Hey, you. That's right, you. Have you been looking to buy an exciting and profitable business? Are you tired of searching, but only finding barriers that impede you from owning a wonderful business? Well, have we got some good news for you. You can find and buy the right business the right way. And you don't have to go it alone. For over 30 years, author and transaction advisor Ted Leverett The original business buyer advocate has been helping buyers worldwide achieve win-win done deals. Ted Leverett says, you can't buy it if you can't find it. You see, buying a business is all about search. Because if you can't find it, you can't buy it. It's about being best and first. First on the scene with sellers and being the seller's first choice. And top of mind for brokers and sellers. And most importantly, avoiding buyer competition. What about having to compete with other buyers? Well, you have to outbid them, which is a good way to pay more than a business is worth. Searchers do better with a winning business buyer marketing plan. And that's where Ted Leverett comes in. He'll help you prepare a winning plan. And then he'll guide your actions so you can find and then buy the right business the right way. But searching is not enough. The reality is too many people buy the wrong business, or they buy the right business, but on the wrong terms. That's why, if you want to buy the right business the right way, it makes sense to have Ted Leverett, the original business buyer advocate, on your advisory team. And one of the best ways to know what the savviest searchers and buyers do is to read Ted Leverett's books, How to Prepare Yourself and Find the Right Business to Buy, and How to Buy the Right Business the Right Way. You can get them at his website, partneroncall.com. Don't chance it. Right now, go to partneroncall.com, get the books, and schedule a free and private telephone conversation with Ted Leverett.